the greater good. Hey everybody, Greater Good Mining here. So this is my mostly stock KS0 Pro that you might have seen in my other videos that I did recently. My goal was to overclock this to see how it compares to a heavily modified KS0 Pro. I've already started tweaking up PB Farber's firmware and I've got an average of 242 giga hash per second on this machine. I've been letting it run for a while because um, I haven't had a chance to tweak these clocks yet and watch them very closely. So it's been running for four days and my two hour average is 242 giga hash per second. So I'm going to slap this thing on a power meter. I'm going to start tweaking this thing and I'm going to see what I can get out of it with minimal mods. Right now um, it's set up with the external fans and the shroud kit and my power stage temps are already 75 degrees. So we'll see what we can get out of this thing. I'm gonna start tweaking up the clocks and I'll show you where I'm at right now with the clocks currently. The only thing I've tweaked so far is the clock offset to 125. I have not increased the voltage yet. So we'll start messing with this and see how it goes. Okay, so far so good. 257 giga hash on the five minute, 241 on the two hour. So uh, we have to wait a little while for that to take its effect. But my chip voltages are fine. The chip temperatures are fine. I've got my clocks, um, it's 200 is my clock offset and five millivolts is my voltage offset. I'm gonna keep tweaking up with the stock, mostly stock one. Now the heavily modified one, here's where we're at. Um, my power stages are in the 90s to low 100s, occasionally gets over 100, but it's acceptable. It's just like occasional peak over 100. Um, voltage is fine, chip temps are fine, and I'm getting pretty good consistently, like 340 to 345 giga hash per second. So I'll keep tweaking this too and see what I can do. Um, 425 is my clock offset and 47 is maxed out on the voltage offset for this so far. Okay, so it's been running for a while now and I'm getting 255 or so giga hash per second on the average. And you can already see that my um, power stages are going into the 90s and peaking at 101 and I haven't even barely begun tweaking this thing compared to my heavily modified one so you can see how quickly you run out of room on the heat for the power stages with no copper heat sinks and no other mods chip voltage is fine chip temperature are actually fine with the uh, stock thermal paste so far but it's a brand new KS0 Pro I have a feeling that will wear out faster since I'm overclocked speaking of overclocks here's my clocks uh, clock offset 275 and clock, uh, or sorry, voltage offset 16. So I have not gotten aggressive with this yet. I'm not looking good for how far we could push this thing, mostly stock. Okay, so I am getting 275 on the five minute, 276 on the 30 minute, and um, I haven't ran it for long enough to let this average come up on the two hour. But I wanted to show you guys the power stages. The power stages are peaking at like 117. Um, they're going up way higher than I feel comfortable. And even down at the lowest, it's like 107, um, 106, and that is higher than I wanna leave it sustained. So 100 is the max that you wanna leave it sustained, and we're getting way over that with the peaks. So this is kind of demonstrating to you the difference between having copper heat sinks on versus not. The chip temperatures are okay uh, with the stock thermal paste, but I don't know how long the stock thermal paste will hold up to the overclocks. So um, for now they're fine, but this is um, why I wanted to demonstrate to you guys mostly stock, just like the external shroud uh, and fans. This is kind of the max that I feel comfortable pushing it. If I push it harder than this, you do not want these power stages going over 125. Um, so I'm going to just let it run for a little while longer like this, um, see what the two hour average is, and I'll, I'll report back to you guys. But this is kind of the max I wanna push it. I'll show you my settings. 300 on the clock offset, 20 on the voltage offset, and I just don't feel comfortable going much more than that. Okay, so we're back in PB Farmer's firmware here, and my two hour average is 276 giga hash per second on the slightly modified KS0 Pro that doesn't have the copper heat sinks on it. Um, I don't like these power stages going as high as they are. I tried to lower the ambient temperature in the garage where I have this one. Um, it was about 75 to 80 degrees um, throughout this testing. Um, so it's stayed pretty consistent. I haven't been able to lower it that much, but we're in like 75 to 80 degree range. And um, it seems like after running for a while, it's stabilized now, but I'm still getting up to 109 uh, at the peak for the power stage temps. 
as low as 100, and that's the max I want to go over is 100. So my <laughs> lowest temp is higher than I want to go, and I'm spiking up to 109. So that kind of, kind of goes to show you um, this is about as hard as I could push this one with the copper heat sinks off the MOSFETs, off the power stages. So um, the chip voltages, um, they're okay. Chip temperatures are okay with the stock paste. The um, settings I have for this one, I ended up with 300 megahertz on the clock offset, uh, 20 millivolts for the voltage offset. You guys let me know what you think. Um, let me know if you think I could have pushed a little harder by doing something different, but I really kind of took my time and tweaked this slow and, and watched it for a while to make sure I didn't burn anything out. And this is about as far as I could push it safely. Now, if I didn't have all this information, I might've tried to push it harder um, because I just had no, I would have had no clue where all, all of this was at. I would think, oh, I'm getting more hash rate. I'll just keep pushing it. Meanwhile, if I didn't know what the power stage temps were, I could have just be toasting this thing. This thing could get fried very easily. And it's, um, it's just, I don't want to push it that hard. So this is where I landed for the mostly stock KS0 Pro. Now let's take a look at my other KS0 Pro that's heavily modified, kind of see where we're at with that one. So I started messing around a little bit more with my heavily modified KS0 Pro, but I'm still um, doing okay. My power stage temps aren't going too much over 100 at any given time, like just for a peak, quick peak. Um, but mostly it's in the 90s and that's cool. We're good with that. Um, I have pushed this one a little harder, but it doesn't seem to like my higher clocks. Um, right now, let me tell you where I landed. 415 for the clock, 47 for the voltage offset, that's the max. Um, I might tweak this down a little bit more and then we'll see if we can get more out of it. I was getting really good hash rate with 390, so I might be just pushing the clocks too hard. So I'll back it down just a little at a time and we'll see where we land. We'll give it a shot. I'm gonna see if I can get any more juice out of this heavily modified KS0 Pro. Okay, with the 405 clock offset and a 47 voltage offset, my two hour average is still around 340 and my five minute is going up to 348. So what's the takeaway here? The takeaway for me seems to be that if you can lower the temperature of your MOSFETs or your power stages without lowering your chip temperatures too much, and you can push your clocks and voltages up slowly but surely, you can get the max out of your KS0 Pro. This is once again, the stock one. Um, I've landed around 278 gig hash on the two hour average. And I wanted to show you something um, that was, you know, maybe this is just me speculating and faffling, but other people have noticed that when your chip temperatures are low, your, it seems like if they're too low, your hash rate does suffer a little bit. You can see here overnight, the temperatures got a little bit colder. Um, my intake temp is around 29, exhaust around 57. Um, and now it's like 940 in the morning, so it has warmed up. But overnight it got colder and my chip temperatures were lower and my hash rate was also lower. So I'm maybe I'm correlating things that shouldn't be correlated, but it does seem like other people have noticed the same thing. They've been trying desperately to get their um, power stage temps down so they've done maximum cooling mods but they're lowering the chip temperatures maybe too much like there's a goldilocks zone for these chips um, and it doesn't seem to be liking when they're down to like 39 see chip 4 is like 39 degrees um, that you know just in, from what i've noticed maybe seems to be too low so i might have to do another session where i move some fans around. Maybe I'll take the fan off the top because in the past, I didn't have all this information where I could see the power stage attempts and the chip temps. And if I maybe take the top fan off and just let the fan run in through the side, maybe that'll be enough to lower the temperature of the power stages without blasting the heat sink so much that it lowers the temperature of the chips. So just a, you know, just an observation. And um, I'm gonna show you the heavily modified K0 Pro 2. So overnight, it seems like it was the same thing. The ch uh, chip temperatures were lower. You know, we're talking about, about 40 degrees. Let's take a look at all of them. Some of them were getting down to 40 degrees. And you can kind of see around that same time, my hash rate did seem to suffer. And now that it's warming up, as the morning goes on, my hash rate seems to be climbing back up to where it was before. And my 
power stages haven't gone over 100. So it's not the power stages causing the problem overnight because they were in the 80s and 90s, not even going over 100. So I'm just showing you guys what I'm noticing and you, you might notice the same thing too. Other people like in my Discord and other people I've talked to have noticed the same thing. So chip temps being low, as low as you can get them is not what you want. You want them to be in an ideal range and it does not seem to be the low 40s. <laughs> um, probably in the 50s is my assumption. It seems like they're happier when they're a little bit higher. So might have to try to continue to tweak and move fans around. Um, of course, your ambient temperatures make a difference because I did not change anything overnight. I let this run overnight on its own. So the temperature got colder overnight and my hash rate did seem to be lower on both of my Ice River machines that I have the shroud kit and the top fan on. So, you know, just like I said, I'm faffling here and I'm taking what other people have said to me into consideration. If we can get, get the power stage temps down without drastically lowering the chip temps, you know, having them in a like Goldilocks zone, that seems to be the way to go. Um, so anyway, let me just show you where I landed. Um, I'm around 340 gig of hash when the temperatures are right on my heavily modified KS0 Pro. And it didn't seem like there was much I could do to get it much higher than this. Um, I showed you earlier my settings uh, where I was like in the mid 340s. Um, let me show you where I'm at right now. 400 for the clock offset and 47 for the voltage offset. So that is my heavily modified KS0 Pro. Somewhere in that range, I seem to be in the mid 340s, depending on ambient temperature. And total system wattage, including the fans, is 225 watts for this heavily modified KS0 Pro. Now let's go ahead and check out the stock one. This is where I finally landed. Yeah, about 280 giga hash per second, 278, 280 on the third, or 279 on the 30 minute average. So around 275 to 280. That's where we're at with the mostly stock KS0 Pro. Let's take a look at the settings. 275 clock offset and 20 on the millivolt. Let me tell you what the wattage is. Okay, so we're about 188 watts for the mostly stock KS0 Pro. This video is already long enough. What I might do is just lower the internal fans, the mini fans that are on the back. See if that will help allow the chip temperatures to rise a little bit without having the MOSFET temps rise. Um, another thing I can do is just take the fan off the top totally and we'll see how it does with just the fan blowing in the side. Um, we can try uh, blowing in from the ethernet side. We can try exhausting uh, from one side or the other. Um, I just, I don't know how the MOSFETs will take all of it. So it, it's gonna take a lot of faffling. <laughs> um, the other thing is I could just try to be happy with 340 giga hash per second. Um, it's a, it's pretty good. I mean, I don't know how much harder you can push this and it might be silicone lottery too. Like, don't forget, you might not be able to get these results with your setup and maybe small tweaks might help a little bit or it might do nothing. Um, so I don't wanna go cr too crazy putting in so much effort just to get another 10 giga hash out of this thing. 10 giga hash per second is almost like a rounding error, you know? So it's fun to mess with these things. I enjoy uh, tweaking these things and doing these videos. So hopefully the video was helpful to you and that you enjoyed it um, and you see some of my results and maybe you can kind of duplicate them or at least modify things with some knowledge that you might've gained from watching me play around with this stuff. So um, if the video was helpful, if you don't mind, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you want to learn how to do this, I will show at the end a card. It's my Hot Rod KS0 Pro video. That's where I show you how to take it apart, uh, put the um, copper heat sinks on the MOSFETs. I show you how to do the thermal paste change out, the thermal pad change out. And then um, I've got some more recent videos where I you know, put on the shroud and the fan kit. So check all those out and um, let me know what you think. All the links uh, to all the products that I've used to modify the KS0 Pro are in the description of the video. Uh, if you use those links, it does help the channel out at no cost to you. It's like an Amazon affiliate link. So if you don't mind using those, if you found this information helpful, I'd really appreciate it. So um, anyway, like I said, like, subscribe, follow me on Twitter. Hopefully this helped. And last but not least, don't forget to keep it decentralized for the greater good.
the greater good.